So if we're going to start examining personal issues and their impact, I want all the details, John. I want them all. I want to know what's going on, because this is disgusting what they're doing to Terry Francona. Best team ever. The Boston Red Sox were destined for greatness in the spring of 2011. As summer drew to a close, they stuck to the script, top of the American League East on September 1st. Seven wins, 20 losses later, Boston missed the playoffs altogether, making history for all the wrong reasons. Fans were pissed, and they should have been. I mean, it was a really, it was kind of a, to me, one of the real low points in Red Sox history. They have spent $320 million the last two years and don't have a playoff appearance. Everything that happened to this ball club here tonight, they deserve. What's going to happen in the offseason? The question marks go well beyond Carl Crawford and John Lackey. For a team to be that good, to be that far ahead, and fall apart that badly, something had to be really wrong, and there was. There was something really wrong. On October 12th, the Boston Globe published a bombshell report by Bob Holer taking readers inside the Red Sox clubhouse. Unearthed were indifferent players more focused on eating chicken and drinking beer than winning ball games, and a lame duck manager whose life appeared to be spiraling out of control. Okay, that was a show beyond belief. They should have just taken the high road. Instead, this story from Holder had all kinds of sordid details about Francona's marriage disintegrating, his reliance on painkillers, I mean, I thought it was a massive takedown. Just, you see what we've been dealing with and we had to let the guy go because of this. He'd completely lost control of his life. And I thought it was just the kind of thing that uh, was as low grade as, as anything I've ever seen the Red Sox do. When there's a story like that, you spend like three or four days on it, just picking at the carcass. By probably day two or day three, you know, the knives get sharpened and you've got to dig a little deeper. And that's when we started, I think, going at Henry a little bit. And that probably got his attention. Let's get John Henry's ex-wives on the phone and see if we can get him into the program to discuss what types of issues he may have been dealing with at home while managing the team. As legend has it, and I say legend, I think it pretty much went down like this. John Henry had a driver. He said, take me to uh, the 98.5 The Sports Hub, walks in the building, and Lee Dickman is sitting at the front desk. Lee Dickman was what we used to call the director of first impressions at CBS Radio Boston. For lack of a better phrase, word, he was the receptionist when you walked into the main lobby at 98.5 The Sports Hub, which was the home of several other radio stations in our cluster. Lee doesn't know a baseball from a grapefruit. Like, he's just not a sports fan. We're on the bottom floor of like four stories. The receptionist is up on the top floor. That's where you enter at street level. And John Henry walks up to our receptionist, Lee Dickman, who says, uh, I'd like to be on the radio. So Friday afternoon, two people walk in and there's one person, he's very suited up and kind of professional looking. So this very skinny man comes up to the desk and looks at me and just says, I would like to be on the air. I was like, what air? And he was like, the sports hub. And I'm like, Lee says, well, who are you? And John Henry says, well, I'm John Henry. And Dickman says, and I'm Lee Dickman. What does that mean? He said, I'm Lee Dickman. <laughs> It, the, the line's immortal, I think. Normally, I would have been like, well, you know, can't do that. You need an appointment. Something along those lines. Right. But he, <laughs> he radiated importance. Right. So I'm like, one second. So the phone rings. I pick it up. And it's Lee. And I, and I remember Lee saying, there's, there's somebody out here that wants to get on Felger and Maz's show. His name is John Henry. He says John Henry wants to get on uh, Felger and Maz. So I said, okay, I'll, uh, all right, I'll be right up. Let me just see what's going on here. So as I'm going up the steps, I'm like, no, it, it can't be him. So the assistant program director, Rick, comes up to the top of the stairs, takes one look at who's standing in the lobby, looks down at the ground, <laughs> composes himself, <laughs> and introduces himself. Because he knows it's John Henry, the owner of the Red Sox. Exactly. And he knows John's mad. Right. As the commotion was unfolding in the lobby, the crew four floors below were unaware of who was about to walk into their studio. So we do the first segment of the show, and Rick Radzik, who at the time was our assistant program director, he comes in this little side studio as Mark Bertrand is doing the Sports Hub headlines. 
and he pulls Mike and Tony off into the corner. I said, what's going on? And Jimmy Stewart, our producer, looks at me and he said, Rick says John Henry's here. I remember thinking, okay, this is a gag. It never occurred to me that actually John Henry was in the building about to walk in the door. I was sort of taken aback and stunned by the whole thing. I'm like, what? I just, I remember jumping back and being like, wow, that's the owner of the Boston Red Sox and he's pissed. I saw it and I was stunned. It was not a joke, it was real. The owner of the Boston Red Sox had shown up on our doorstep to give his side of the story. John, to what do we owe the pleasure? Well, when you're misleading the public, you know, you should be challenged on some of the things you're, you're saying. He came in hot. He was not happy. And the thing that he came in, I think most hot about was previous references to his personal life, his multiple marriages, his current wife. Part of the whole story was Terry Francona was having marital problems and things of this nature. And we, I think we took that to say, oh, okay, well, marital problems are now on the table. I wonder what John Henry's marital situation's like. And so I think it was maybe his tipping point that the conversation had focused so much on him over the days following the Holer story that he was most upset about. But I also think he felt like he wasn't the source for Holer's story. With regard to Bob Holer, whom you I- You believe, you believe we came out and smeared Tito. You believe that. Do I believe you specifically? I don't know who. I know team sources came out team and smeared sources. Tito. Yes. If it's someone with the t in the team and that's what it says in the newspaper, well, then I'm very upset about it. When it came to blaming the owners of the Red Sox for airing out Terry Francona's personal life, John Henry was getting the brunt of the criticism. And so the thing he did repeatedly say was that the show was misleading the public in the things that Felger and Maz were saying. Were you just driving around listening to us? Yes. Okay. So that's why I'm here. You're putting words into my mouth, which are misleading the public. So why shouldn't, I think it's great of you guys to allow me to come in and answer your question. Like everybody else, we were blaming John Henry and Larry Lucchino for leaking that story. That was the feeling of a lot of fans, a lot of media, a lot of insiders. So that was a, a common thing. I still think we got it right. I mean, I have no doubt. Now, maybe it wasn't John Henry, maybe it was. Uh, but to me, so the, the organization, and I use the term is all encompassing, they threw the manager under the bus after eight historic years. I thought that was as low as it gets. Besides trying to clear the Sox of strong accusations of leaking the story, Henry took the opportunity to go on the offensive about the substance of Felger and Maz's daily four-hour show. He got really caught up on the journalism versus entertainment. I feel like he was trying to really jab Felger and Maz with that. You know, I guess this isn't what you would call journalism. This is entertainment, right? Tony and I have had this discussion before about the difference between journalism and entertainment. And, he, and he's told me this is entertainment as opposed to journalism. Yeah, guilty. Uh, guilty. We like to say sometimes that our show isn't, it's not necessarily hard news. It's, it's based on, uh, you know, it's based on true events. So, yeah, he's got a point. So, look, Mike and I both worked in newspapers, albeit for a tabloid, for the majority of the time. And even in newspapers, there's a little bit of both. Henry's appearance came shortly before the launch of the Felger and Maz TV simulcast. So gathering visual evidence came by stealthy means. I'm like, I gotta document this. Like whether it be for social media or for something to prove that it's actually John Henry. So I just kind of took my phone and I just kind of like angled it so it wasn't obvious that I was taking a picture of him. Turns out it was obvious. Are you taking pictures? <laughs> <laughs> to memorialize this moment. Even when the mics were off, tension remained high during Henry's visit. I absolutely okay. have to break. John, here's the deal. We take a commercial break. Okay, if... I'll tell you my philosophy while we're off the air. If you want to stay, I'm stay. If you want to go, stay, go. I'll stay. And during that one break, John Henry and Maz go at it. John Henry took off his headset and looked at Maz and went, what happened to you? <laughs> Maz felt like it was... A bit of a dig, off the air, what happened to you? I used to like you. 
It was, a, it was a tense moment there between those two guys, and the break wasn't that long because a minute or two later, we were back on the air and the interview continued. I thought there was a lot that came out of that that fans learned. You have to understand, Larry Lucchino runs the Red Sox. Was Carl Crawford a baseball signing or a television rating signing? Definitely a baseball signing. I personally oppose that. Is it true that Beckett gained considerable weight during the year? That's one of the things we're looking at. Um, I would have loved for Theo to have been our general manager for the next 20 years, but you don't always get what you want. It just was so different. I mean, there are a lot of occasions where we're on the air and something happens, and it's not like the owner of the team walks in and sits in on a live show with you every day. If I'm known for anything, I'm known for a handful of things, and I'd say four of the five are bad. This is the one that isn't all that bad. And I, you know, I, I would say that that's, that's, uh, that's sort of nice to have mixed in there, that I did nothing wrong here. And it was just sort of a, a memorable moment. Mike and I have basically been on the air for 14 years together now. We've never had a day like that one. In 2013, the Red Sox returned to the World Series. On the eve of the Fall Classic, Jimmy Stewart and Mark Bertrand attended a media gala at Fenway Park and mingled with a familiar face. Oh, there's Don Henry over there with uh, his wife, Linda. And Mark says, you should go over and talk to him. I go, you know what? I think I will. I reintroduce myself. I say, hey, I'm Jimmy Stewart from Felger and Maz, 985. Uh, would love for you to come back and crash the castle. And John Henry just like, he ramps up his anger and he says, no way, those guys are I'll never come back on that show. <laughs> that was what he said. Why would I want to go on with those a-holes? Why would I want to do that? And Jimmy laughed and I laughed. And the look of shock on Linda's face was amazing. He was still angry. And to use that terminology to describe anybody, yeah, he hates us. He hates us a lot. If Henry does, in fact, hate them, the hosts are not losing sleep over it. I, you know, I think we all have an understanding of how the town works from a media standpoint and from a, a fan passion standpoint. But, you know, it's probably a matter of time before I say something that pisses him off again, and then we'll head in the other direction. I, I don't think he looks fondly on that day. Uh, he probably hates us like poison. He's not alone from people in, in, in this town that we cover. And so... I have no problem with that. People right now are forgetting that this was a great team before September, and they're concentrating solely on September. And I don't blame them for that. We are too. We're concentrating on what happened in September. But I love this team, and I'm going to do everything I can to get it back to where it, it needs to be. All right, John, seriously, don't be a stranger. Come on by any time. Doors always open. John Thank Henry. You. Appreciate it, John. Here on Felgren Maz. Appreciate it, John. Here on Felgren Maz.